Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the cards in the Once and Future Kang Scenario Pack for Marvel Champions, the card game. So down at the table, taking a look at this expansion here. So you can see this is for the Once and Future Kang. It is a 73 card scenario pack, which includes a brand new scenario with six unique versions of the time traveling tyrant Kang. Adventure in time and space as the heroes are separated and must reunite to stop Kang. The three exciting modular encounter sets made of past, present, and future threats. Before I get into the unboxing, I am doing a giveaway on a copy of this. So if you're interested in that, please check the end of the video. A winner will be picked on next Monday, October 12th. So good luck on that. So let's go ahead and take a look inside here. So we've got our expansion booklet. So shield briefing, some new keywords, insight. So it's a win revealed ability, piercing, discards any tough status cards from the target before dealing damage, and villainous. When a minion with the villainous keyword activates, give it a face down boost card from the top of the encounter deck. When you resolve that minion's activation, turn the boost card face up and apply its boost icons to the minion's stats for this activation. The boost card has a boost ability, resolve its effect. So basically, it's making a typical minion, more like a villain. So setup in this is gonna be different. So basically we are gonna to have to go through all three versions of Kang. So we'll be setting versions two and three to the side as we meet the first Kang. And Kang two and three will interplay through card effects. So create separate game areas. The players advance to stage 2A. Each player reveals their own random stage three in turn order. This represents Kang using his power to separate the heroes through time and space. Each stage tells the player who revealed it to create your own game area and place the scheme in it. To do this, place your stage 3A on the table directly in front of your play area, then resolve the rest of your stage 3A's when revealed effects. And each player, after each player's finished resolving the one revealed, it's flipped to its B-side, and stage two remains in play in a central location and its text remains active for all players, though it is not part of any other game area. It's gonna get confusing here. So here's an example of setting things up. So 2B, and then the setup for all the other players. So playing with separate game areas. While players are playing with separate game areas, the following rules apply. Cards and components in one game area cannot affect another game area, with the exception of text on stage 2B. Players cannot attack or defend enemies in other game areas, and they cannot target any game elements. While the players are in separate game areas, they continue to use the same encounter deck and discard pile. Play still proceeds in turn order, and the first player token is still passed the same. So joining another game area, when you defeat Kang 2 in your game area, you are instructed to join another game area at the end of the phase. To do this, choose a game area and reorient the cards on the table to indicate that you have joined that place, basically. Uh, any side schemes that were in play in your previous game area become part of that area. Any minions that you are engaged with remain engaged with you. Players should share a game area to free defend for each other attack. Minions engage with each other and play cards under each other's control. Strategy tip, if a player is in danger of being defeated by Kang 2, that player should change to alter ego form and recover hit points. It is better to let Kang complete his main scheme than to let Kang 2 defeat your hero. So adjusting the difficulty. So if you want a greater challenge, it comes with its own expert cards and modular encounter sets. So we're getting three sets here. The Anachronauts, difficulty eight, Master of Time, difficulty six, and Temporal, difficulty four. All right, well, let's look at some cards here. So two packs of cards. So we've got each of those packs out of their shrink wrap. So starting with King the Conqueror, schema one, attack of two, Temporal, comes in with toughness. Force interrupt. When he attacks you, either place a threat on the main scheme or he gets plus two attack for this attack. When defeated, advance the main scheme to stage two at the end of the phase and 12 hit points per player. Then Kang Immortus. 
Scheme of two, attack of two. So these are level two. There's going to be four of those. So he's got toughness. Cannot take damage while a minion is in play. And when defeated, removes the Chronopolis from the game at the end of the phase. Join another game area. 18 hit points. King Iron Lad, Schema 1, Attack of 2, Temporal, Retaliate, and Toughness. When defeated, remove an exorable fate from the game. At the end of the phase, join another game area. King Ramatut, Schema 1, Attack of 2, Toughness. He gets plus 1 attack for each obligation in play. Remove the Realm of Ramatut from the game. At the end of the phase, join another game area. And Kang the Scarlet Centurion. Scheme of zero, attack of three. Toughness, his attacks gain piercing. When defeated, remove the present future war from Kang at the end of the phase. Join another game area. And then Kang three, scheme of two, attack of two. Toughness, when he attacks you, either place a threat on the main scheme or he gets plus two attack for this attack. And when defeated, the players win the game. 20 hit points per player. So our schemes, we'll start with the A side. So it's telling us what to do with our kings. Recommended the temporal set. The minion side scheme aside, remove player's obligation cards from the game. So we're not going to put our individual cards in. And shuffle the encounter deck. Seven per player. When revealed, deal each player an encounter card. So not my favorite way to start a game and fairly low threat there. Then Master of Time, place one acceleration token here for each side scheme in play. Then discard each side scheme. Each player reveals a random stage 3A in turn order. Remove any unused stage 3 schemes from the game. So forced interrupt. When an acceleration token would be placed on another scheme, place it here instead. Players cannot join this game area unless there are no other game areas remaining. When all the players have joined this game area, advance to stage 4A. And then we've got our four threes. So the present future war. Create your own game area and place the scheme in it. Add King the Scarlet Centurion to the game area and deal yourself an encounter card. So nine threat is the limit here. After this stage is completed, place a set aside King's Dominion face down under stage 4A. The end of the phase, remove King, the Scarlet Centurion, and this stage from the game and combine your game area with another game area. So it's just plus one and then starting with two on it. Then the Realm of Ramatut. So all these are going to be the same, just adding a different Kang version into your game area. And I think all the stages are going to be pretty much the same text, except the different version. This one starts with a little less threat on it. So this one's getting Iron Lad. And this one's getting Immortus. Then we go to level four. Reveal Kang three, add him to the game area. Reveal each face down Kang's dominion under this stage. 10 per player, so we're back to helping each other out. When revealed, each player searches the encounter deck, discard pile, and set aside area for their nemesis minion, and puts it into play and engage with them, then shuffle the encounter deck. So everyone's definitely gonna see their nemesis. Pretty interesting effect. Then we'll get to the meat of his card. So we've got two temporal shields. Attached to Kang, force interrupt, when King is attacked, discard this, prevent all damage from this attack, and deal one damage to the attacker. Max one per attack. Then we have two future weapons, giving him plus two attack. Attach to King. When he attacks, the attack gains overkill. If this attack damages a hero, that hero is stunned. After this attack, discard the future weapon. Frozen in time. 
attached to your identity. When attached character wood ready, discard this card instead. And the boost does the same. Interesting. Then we've got three macro bots. Schema one, attack at two with four health, guard and retaliate one. Boost, give Kang a tough status card. Got two weakened. Force response, after you use a basic hero power, take a damage. All right, so these are obligations. All right, so alter ego, discard a physical resource from your hand to discard this obligation. Then stolen memories obligation. When revealed, place the top eight cards of your deck face down under this card. It's an alter ego action. Discard a mental resource from your hand to discard this obligation. Discard each face down card under this obligation. So we're losing almost a quarter of our deck in this. Two depowered obligations. Cannot play hero specific cards. It's an alter ego action. Discard a hero specific card from your hand to discard this obligation. And time traveling hijinks. So another ob obligation, discard the highest cost card you control, then place it face down under this card. It's an alter ego action, discard a energy resource from your hand to discard this obligation. And got some side schemes here. Corrupted time stream. Players cannot trigger alter ego action abilities on obligations. Interesting. When revealed, each player must either discard one random card from the hand or place two threats here. Then we have four King's Dominion cards. So King cannot take damage. When defeated, deal with the player who defeated this scheme an encounter card. So not a cool looking side scheme. Pin down, when revealed, place two threat here for each obligation in play. And Rampage. So it looks like we've got two of these here. When defeated, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a minion is discarded. Put that minion into play engaged with the player who defeated this scheme. And I'm also thinking we're seeing a lot of boost icons. So a lot of twos and threes. So the rest of our cards, we've got two energy blast. Now we're back to treacheries when revealed. Alter ego, discard an ally or support you control. If you cannot, this card gains surge. If you're in hero mode, Kang attacks you. So now we're down to some one boost icons. Manipulated time stream. When revealed, discard each event from your hand. If no events are discarded this way, this card gains surge. Time travel tactics. Surge. When revealed, each player takes one indirect damage for each obligation in their play area. This card gains a boost for each obligation in your area. Ugh. Past machinations. Insight 1, when revealed, each player searches their encounter deck and discard pile for a different obligation and reveals it. Shuffle the encounter deck. This is going to be a tough one. Ancient Warriors, scheme of 1, attack of 2, a 2 health, quick strike, and a boost as you are stunned. Tatari Soldiers, scheme of 1, attack of 1. Force Interrupt. When he attacks you, discard the top card of the encounter deck. Take indirect damage equal to the number of boost icons on that card. Tyrannosaurus Rex. No scheme, but three attack, toughness, and his attack scheme piercing. Which definitely makes sense. And we've got a time portal. This scheme is defeated. Shuffle it into the encounter deck instead of discarding it. Then we're getting expert versions of the three kings, or all the different kings. Let's break this out for some comparisons here. So he's going to have more attack. 
All the abilities stay the same and 15 health per player. For Mortis, a little bit more scheme. And everything else stays the same except health goes up to 22. Iron Lad, it's a little bit more scheme and a little more attack. And a little more health, up to 22. Rama Tut. So, Schema 2, Attack of 3. All the other abilities the same, and 22 health. Scarlet Centurion. He gets to Scheme and Attack of 4. With 22 health. Then Kang the Conqueror. Our third version, scheme of three, attack of three, and everything else looks the same except 25 health per player. So they're boosting up quite a bit. Then we get our modular sets. So we've got the Anachronauts. So they've got nine cards. Then Master of Time with eight cards. And I guess that means I already went through the Temporals. Let's see which ones those were. They started with the Ancient Warrior for the Temporals stack. So there they had seven of those. Then the Anachronauts come into play. The Apocryphus. Schema one, attack of three with four health. When reveal, discard, an ally or support you control. Boost, exhaust a character you control, give this enemy another boost card. Death Hunt 9000, Schema 1, Attack 1, 6 health, Toughness, and Villainous. So he gets a boost card when he attacks and schemes. And boost, give this enemy a tough status card and another boost card. Sir Rastin, Guard and Retaliate 1, Schema 1, Attack of 2, and 6 health. Boost, take a damage, give this enemy another boost card. And Terminatrix, Schema 2, attack of 2 with 5 health. Quick Strike, attacks gain piercing, and the boost. Give this enemy two more boost cards. Wild Run, Schema 1, attack of 2 with 5 health. When revealed, discard one random card from your hand. Boost ability, discard one random card from your hand and give this enemy another boost card. Then we have the Anachronauts. When defeated, shuffle each temporal card in the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. It's going to give us an extra encounter card. And King's Chosen. Insight 1. When reveal, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a temporal minion is discarded. Reveal that minion. And once again, we've got boost abilities and twos and threes for boosts. And now the Master of Time. So we've got another Kang. Schema one, attack of one, toughness and villainous. It's plus one scheme attack for each obligation in your play area and six health. Time Display Soldiers, Schema 1, Attack of 2, 3 Health, Insight 1, and Surge. Boost Ability, Deal Yourself 1 Face Down Encounter Card. Then 2 Fear of Kang, Obligations. Yeah, it's just a minion. All right, you cannot attack Kang. Makes sense if you're afraid of him. It's an Alter Ego Action, Discard a Random Card from your hand to discard this obligation. Light of Century Sphere. When defeated, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a minion is discarded. Put that minion into play engage with the player who defeated this scheme. And an Ancient Grudge. When revealed, Kang, Master of Time, activates against you. If he's not in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for him and put him in play engage with you. Then shuffle the encounter deck. So I feel like initial impressions... This scenario pack has stepped the game up, so I think even in standard, this is going to be tough. In experts, well, a lot more tougher. And I ran a poll for my YouTube members, 
And they chose my first battle against Kang will be Black Widow with Hawkeye. So we'll see how that goes out to play. And as far as the giveaway, like I said, I'll be picking a winner on Monday, October 12th afternoon to get entered for that. Very simple. Just leave a comment down below, starting with giveaway in all caps, and let me know who your favorite Marvel villain is, whether it's in the game or not. And I'll have the rules posted in the description below, along with right here. So the basics, you must be 18 years or older to enter. YouTube is not a sponsor of this giveaway. And if you want to join in the question, just don't put giveaway in your comments. That way I can find out who everyone's favorite villain is. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.